Welcome back to Weekend Breakfast with me, David Ball. The time, 7.26, lots of messages coming in. Happy birthday to the mum of David. He's a smashing lad, says Maureen. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I never see you as a lad. <laughs> no, no, me neither. Uh, Dan in... Oh, oh, good morning, doctors. Let's do this one. Sean in Gloucester. Um, I love your shirt, David. Thank you very much indeed. Now, we're talking about Russell Brown. The main problem with making the allegations about Russell Brown public is that people will decide whether he's guilty or not based on if they like him. Yeah. I do have a problem when there is a period of time between the alleged crime and it then being reported to the police. That's Sean in Gloucester. Uh, also, on, we were talking earlier about the BMA being infiltrated by left-wing activists. Dan in Kent said, I knew this was going to happen with the union. Striking is an act of social activism. And now social media has got hold of the younger generation. It's gathering paste. It's going out of control and heading down the road of civil unrest. Thank you for those. Keep those coming in. Also, I'm just asking this morning, at what point should sensitive information go public. This is based on the front pages almost every single newspaper running uh, with this story about Russell Brand. At what point should sensitive information go public? The number is 0344 499 1000. Text the word talk in your message to 8722 and tweet us at Talk TV and tweet me at Dr David Bull. Let's run through this morning's uh, papers and I'm delighted to say we've got a lawyer in the house. <laughs> uh, Andrew Eborn joins us this morning quite by accident. I don't, quite by accident. No, well you're never by accident. Yes, obviously. Right, thank you. But and lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. And many happy returns <laughs> to your mum. 59th anniversary of her 21st, I understand. Oh, oh so, you are good. There you, you just go. Work that out. I, 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 you all did. fingers and thumbs. Well, it's, actually, it's it was good. my parents' anniversary today as well. I, I so, realise so, that as well. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so it's a, a very poignant day. Indeed. Very poignant. And only 99 days till Christmas. Oh, hurrah. <laughs> hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get your stockings out. Right, right, right. Get all your stockings <laughs> out. Waistcoats, earrings. Yes. We can do waistcoats again as we normally do. Phil, the producer, he'll be wearing. Ridiculous clothes yet again. <laughs> hey. The newspapers. Right, let's and go. Right, every on a single serious paper, note. every yeah. single paper talking about Russell Brand. And I saw the dispatches report yesterday. For those just waking up, you watched um, the whole thing. I, I have seen the whole thing. Um, and I have to say, it's, it's like all of these situations, we all rush in to judge. Of course. And the reality is, whether you like him, you don't like him, whether you share his views or not, it is totally irrelevant. The facts need to come out and we need to be balanced. Well Russell said. is very, very clear that he has said every relationship he's had has been consensual. He's admitted to being very promiscuous and the clips that they used in the dispatches programme all talk about him. They're basically showing him talking about sex and so on and so forth. And they've cut those with various victims, uh, alleged victims, uh, saying what they say uh, in, in response. Very detailed investigation by the Sunday Times. I would thoroughly recommend people go out and buy a copy and read it and, and, and uh, allegedly years in the making exactly and they, they talked about it in the dispatches program they said there was at least a year where they've been working on it mm. and i know the times are incredibly thorough in terms of what they do mm. but the reality is this the facts will come out there are all sorts of questions about who knew what when including the various organizations as that, is often the case as is these. often the case but i have to say that the difficulty that we have is that th we're trying to fill the vacuum and it's no good speculating at this stage. There has to be a process, and everybody in this in this country is and around the world should be innocent until proven guilty. I agree. And there are no charges yet made. And when charges are brought, then rules and regulations start changing and so on. So well, so so and that's a really important point because the Metropolitan Police have said we are aware of media reporting of a series of allegations of sexual assault. At this time, we have not received any reports in relation to this. If anyone believes they have been the victim of a sexual assault, no matter how long ago it happened we would encourage them to go to the police. Uh, absolutely and that's the right procedure and then there are protections in place to make sure it's a fair trial and that media reporting doesn't prejudice that trial it, it's very it makes very difficult viewing i didn't see the whole thing because uh, obviously i had to go to bed but i did watch the lead up to it on channel 4 they were drip feeding it in the they news were. i found it very uncomfortable renee yeah i said that to you this morning mm. it's it, it when you read it, you go into the detail, it makes very uncomfortable reading. As a woman and a mother, for me, it makes even probably more uncomfortable reading. But at the same time, there are accusations from anonymous women. We need the truth to be out in a court of law. If 
there yeah. is enough evidence for that to happen. Uh, yeah, and you're absolutely right. And, and the accusations are horrendous and horrendous for victims if they are victims, but also horrendous if you're falsely accused. And yeah. I think you need to look at those sort of things. Uh, and I think we need to respect both sides uh, uh, and follow the And process. it was interesting, wasn't it? Russell Brown very much on the front foot here. He responded yeah. on his video message. He's watched by, what, 11 million people? 11.2 million he's got. That particular video, and that's how I first heard about it, yeah. uh, early in the morning, he posted it actually about 11.21 at night, I think on the Friday. So I saw that uh, straight away. He's now got about 45 million people has have seen his denial. And so you then had to work out, well, what is the story that's about to well, break? I mean, and high-profile people have waded in. Elon Musk, for example. Yeah. We've also, I think... Harvey Donald, Proctor. Harvey Proctor. Donald Trump's waded into yes, this. So, so this is a hugely high-profile case now. I, absolutely. And I've seen on, on, on Twitter people been texting me directly as well, saying, hang about, I've got friends of mine who are women who, th who support him. The reality is... That is irrelevant, all, all due respect, because only the people involved know what really happened. And that's uh, Russell and, and, and the, re the relevant people who are accusing him. They're the people we need to look at. And, and the nicest person in the world can do terrible things. Well, the most ho horrible person in the world can do nice things. Well, it will indeed. And Rene, you sent me a message from one of those women who said they had a consensual relationship with, with Russell Brand. Um, but, but as Andrew said, that's irrelevant. Yeah. Yes, of course, because what somebody, the way somebody behaves with one woman yes. is entirely different to how they may behave with another. But I think the interesting thing is here, as you say, 45 million views of his videos. Yes. He has 11 million viewers on his YouTube channel. He says lots of things that are not liked by lots of people. So one now questions, what will YouTube do? And if they take down his channel, I think that will be a travesty in that he hasn't been found guilty of anything. So, so that's interesting. Just in terms of this, yes. as I said, he was on the front foot. What's the legal process? He would have been told about these accusations. Well, so, so, and he mentioned in, in the picture of the video, and do, do watch it because it's his side of the story, what he says, he was sent a letter and an email by the TV company and obviously the newspaper uh, within this building mm. um, that would have looked at that because they would do the normal process for checking the facts because the, the, the basic principle is if you say things, you obviously stand the risk of defamation if, it, if it's not true uh, and action and so, so can be uh, taken. He would have been advised of this particular story and asked to comment. Mm. Um, so he then um, basically took his own huge platform, 11.2 million people, and gave his. But side. he would have sought legal advice. Oh, yeah, he, I, 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 he may well have done, but he certainly should have done. No, he has. It says in there that mm. lawyers were approached or lawyers were appointed. There were discussions. Initially, the lawyers said they couldn't possibly answer the litany of accusations, and then they came back with his denial. Mm. It would be the normal process, in the same way as media outlets, very rightly, would talk to all their lawyers on their of side course. as well. And I think there is a process that happens. What we don't know are all the facts and people the, the difficulty is this uh, is that russell is a very controversial character the reason he's got such a huge audience pt barnum said if you want to draw a crowd start a fight and he touches on big farmer issues he touches mm. on all sorts of things in in which is why he's got this huge audience and this is why people think they're trying to take him down the reality is get rid of those theories and basically we need to look at the facts let that come out in the usual process but make sure that we always reiterate innocent till proven so, so it's interesting Many people have said, well, why didn't these women go to the police? But I have total empathy with them. If, if these allegations are true, maybe they couldn't. Maybe they couldn't come to terms with it. Maybe they've buried their heads in the sand. Maybe they see him at the height of his fame mm -hmm. then, and they've, they've heard about this, they've been contacted, and they think, well, I need closure. And again, so I can see yeah. it from both sides. And, again, and, it's, and it's right to look at it from both sides. Uh, again, some of the evidence that we've seen, only one side. Uh, one of the victims said she went to a rape crisis centre yeah. um, straight after the uh, alleged attack. And, and that's apparently documented and so on and so forth. All of the facts will come out maybe in the fullness of time, but until those facts are there, speculation is incredibly dangerous. Well, well said. We'll, we'll deal more with this story uh, in about half an hour's time as well. Let's move on, shall we? And, and talk about the NHS, something Rennie and I talk about <laughs> the whole time. What, what's the latest? Well, what this is, is it's Sunday Express saying millions ditch the crisis hit NHS and go private um, because what's happening is that there's huge delays you can't huge. get to see a doctor and so 7. on and so forth. Seven million. And that's what they're saying. And, and they the basically and, and they did a, a and the survey. Rest. That's a very good point. And the rest. That's not a true figure. It's not no. because there are hidden waiting lists because once a they've absolutely. actually acknowledged you you come off the main waiting list and you go onto a sub waiting list. Which isn't really yeah. a waiting list. So it's list. probably about 12 million people. And, and, and it is scandalous. 
journalist and you need to look at that sort of thing. Um, the Sunday Express also did a poll. They asked people, saying, well, is the NHS going to be around uh, in, in 2048 uh, for the 100th birthday? And people said, about a quarter of people said, no, I'm not sure that's really entirely relevant. Um, but the reality is this. We need to look at two things. One is making it more efficient. One of the ways, as you know, I'm always going to say, artificial intelligence. And, <laughs> I, and so, but it is a solution. And it is topical because just a couple of days no, ago, a couple of days ago, they did a, a, a res results of a survey that they did in the Netherlands and they compared the results of particular patients and, and the scan results and so on and so forth and they did 30 different cases and they gave it to an AI to mm. basically get the right sort of uh, diagnosis and to doctors and the AI performed better than the doctors I, I'm diagnosis. not surprised because diagnosis is often algorithms but well, Rene is going okay, to... Okay, I'm going to add in here in order for that information to be fed into the AI someone would have had to take a history. Well, that's... <laughs> no, so, so I totally agree but it's interesting, isn't it, on the diagnostic pathway but it goes back to us as humans if you get the right information in at the beginning of your Occam's razor you tend to get the right answer out. Absolutely, and to your point and you're absolutely right, the information, so what happened is they fed the information in and then they gave the same information to both the AI and the doctors and the doctors were not as good at the AI at spotting what the treatment <laughs> oh, was. Look. And the other thing that we had, the University of California, they were saying that chatting to chat GPT, as you know beforehand, was better than chatting to your GP because they've got more time and more empathy and so on and so forth. Well, but if they can work alongside each other, then great. That's the idea. But, I it's mean, a tool. It's well, a tool. let's go That's back to the private do. medicine thing, which is really fascinating. I have a real bugbear with this. I have private medicine now mm. for two reasons. Me One too. is I'm self-employed yeah. and therefore I can't afford to be mm -hmm. away from work. But what I have a major problem with, when I phone them up about something, I have to go back to my NHS GP, who is the gatekeeper. That cannot be so, right. OK, it's not right. And it's, again, it takes up time of a GP that's not necessary because what GP is going to say, no, I'm not going to sit here and type you a letter to go to your private provider. It is a gatekeeping game by the insurers to, to try and out. delay you and stop paying out. However, many of them now have their own GP that you can consult as part of your package online who will you the letter. No, I did that. I did that, and they still want the letter from the anyway. Yeah. So, so, so should we make yeah. should we make private healthcare tax, tax deductible? Um, I think the reality we need to look at the whole system. We need to not. It's not just about money. It's about efficiencies. And they say AI can help with efficiencies to get that working. Your working collaboration is not going to replace doctors in the same way as it's not going to replace everybody in professions. It is an incredibly powerful mm. tool to make that happen. Mm. And I think if that's not happening, then of course you should look at the way that the health and wealth of the nation are intertwined. So we need to make that. Look, make I, sense. I believe that AI. I will replace some doctors, and I really do. I think radiologists are probably really at risk because AI has now looked at millions of scans and can actually just do them in a second. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. Friends of mine at Morfields, friends of yes. mine at Morfields are saying that the information that AI can pick up, they can sex people. Interesting, in talking about gender, yeah. they can sex people by their eyes, don't which a human ridiculous. eye can't do. It. But don't don't they be can, ridiculous, Andrew. Tell you, a friend of mine at Morfields, that's what they can do. And there are women and men have there different are, eyes. There are 150 different of them. So it's got to be good. Uh, the, the reality, the reality is that. But also they're picking up things like Parkinson's and so on. Yeah, and so that forth. is interesting. Wasn't that great? And that's mm. all down to what I've been banging on about artificial intelligence. <laughs> it is the future. It is the now, and we should embrace it. Right. Okay. Let's move on very quickly. We have mentioned this. The GMC. This is the governing body for doctors. The General Medical Council. They've ru <laughs> I was going to use a terrible word, the mother. <laughs> They've removed the word mother uh, from the staff maternity guidance, which I find extraordinary. This is the mother of ridiculous uh, decisions. Thank you. I'm glad you put in the yeah. friendly way. You know, the, the sad thing about this is 96% of people in this country will find that ridiculous. And yet, but they still, don't. this minority. What this does say to me, however, is as a doctor, you need to be very careful because if this is where they're coming from and they're regulatory body and they can take away your livelihood god forbid you call someone a mother and, and that's the interesting thing is people are more scared other doctor friends of mine they're more scared of the gmc than they are of the police because oh, basically 100%. they can take your license away so the wording that they've changed it used to be called surrogate mother it's now called surrogate parent um and they also talk even about um references to women generally so they've got it about menopause it doesn't what is it talk. Now? It a doesn't even. Pause. Yeah, well, but a yeah, person of pause. Yeah, menopause. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, um, no, they basically say it, it's about be people, colleagues experiencing the menopause yeah. as so, opposed to women. So, dear GMC, here's a <laughs> bit of biology for you. The only people that experience menopause are women. 
Well so said. So we call it womenopause, and I, I like that idea. That'll be the new campaign. No, but we I, call it menopause, uh, uh, just so that men know how much men, we men, suffer. Well, okay, I, I, um, very quickly, we, our time is very tight. Yes. Is there anything else you want to pick out? Because we've spent a long time oh, no, on, they, on they, Russell Brown. They will very quickly. What yeah. I love, Newman, fantastic cartoons um, in The Times, which sort of summarises everything brilliantly. Um, and you won't be able to see it all, but they basically got, uh, there's a shoplifter saying, damn shoplifters, there's nothing left to nick. <laughs> <laughs> and so empty, empty thing. Uh, there's a little sign of, uh, of basically of the summit saying, um, uh, I'm here to translate nutter into lunatic. They're talking about Putin and uh, and our friend from North Korea. And they also finally say, your son uh, benefited, uh, basically identified as an XL bully dog. We had to put him down. Oh. There you go. So the whole thing, and they're tying it in, mm. Newman's brilliant cartoons. Very clever. A cartoon can say a lot, can't it? And, 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 and very pithily. I'm still chuckling over Matt's yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we're going with two people in a car saying we're going to be late, <laughs> and the guy says to the wife, "Don't worry, I'll jump out and run ahead and." Tell I go, "There's <laughs> twenty bars and you're right. I, the cars are so slow now; it's horrendous." Uh, <laughs> Andrew, thank you so thank much. Thank you so Always much. Always such thank a great you. pleasure, Andrew Eborn, there, a barrister and broadcaster. Right, uh, time for a break. After the break, we'll be popping over to the United States to talk to Caroline Faraday in Transatlantic Talk. This is Talk to Me.